Yes, convertible electric SUV is here. Built in America, 300 miles range, 830 horsepower. There's so many cameras. GMC is doing something really interesting with this. Get this, are you ready for this? Welcome back to What's Inside. Today is a very exciting day that for me is six months in the making. We are going to see what's inside the all new electric Hummer, but not just the Hummer, the all new Hummer electric SUV. The reason why I say it's been six months in the making is because I was supposed to be here in October for the Hummer truck reveal, but unfortunately I had my appendix ripped out. Thank you. And ever since that Hummer electric truck was released, I've had so many questions from a lot of you guys and people on the street. What do you think about GMC's electric truck? And I haven't had a really good opinion because I have not seen it in person. We saw our friend Zach, he did a video on it that showed the deep dive of everything that's inside of that. Well now Hummer has an SUV, which is really nice for me because I'm not as much of a truck kind of guy. Like I don't really need a truck bed for things. I have friends that have trucks and I just call them up and they come help me. So today we are going to See what's inside of the electric SUV, and is it something that you should buy? We need to pull this cloth off. I, we've got Zach, he is here. Zach, can you be Vanna White and like take off the <laughs> curtain for me? That would be my job, I got this. <laughs> you can do it. All right, here we go. The reveal. Oh, okay, okay, thank you Zach, well done. So this is it, this is the first new electric car that I'm checking out in 2021, and I'd say it's a pretty dang good looking one. It is an SUV, and the question might be like, how does it compare to the Hummer truck, which a lot of you have seen so far? It's a little bit shorter. Instead of having a truck bed, you have 82 cubic feet of storage in the back. Because this has the crab mode, and because all four wheels can turn when you're like doing a U-turn, it actually drives like a car and you can get around easier. You have Hummer EV right in the headlights on the light bar. Personally growing up, the Hummer and the Humvee has been one of my favorite vehicles that I've always loved just seeing on the road. I've always wanted to own one. I never have pulled the trigger and done it. Part of the reason is because the gas mileage on those things are terrible on the old, old ones. It's kind of this weird spectrum. You've got Cybertruck on one side of it where it's like super futuristic, modern, kind of like strange looking in a way, but then you also have like a Rivian that looks like an actual pickup truck. This is a good middle ground between both. It definitely looks tough, it looks futuristic, but it still has all the characteristics of what a normal SUV and a normal truck would look like. Look at this tow hook right here. Back in the day, the Humvee, especially in the military setting, they would connect these to a helicopter and just carry these things or drop them in somewhere. A must have for any SUV, like honestly, we use this feature so much in our SUV at home, is doors that are automatic. Now, the four doors around the side are not automatic, but the back is automatic, and then also the front trunk is automatic. This is obviously not the final production. It will be that you just push a button, this thing opens, but once you open it up, there is so much space inside of here. I really like the height of this. Once you put the seats down, you have up to 82 cubic feet of storage, but then you also have more storage that's underneath here. I've never had a car that has a front trunk that actually opens and closes by itself. Okay, this is actually a massive front trunk. Most EV front trunks, the frunks, are so tiny. You could fit a small person inside of there. That sounds really dark. It's time to see what's inside of the Hummer SUV. Do I see myself ever riding in something like this? Absolutely. This has a really nice feel inside of it. You have a big touch screen in here, but it's not overwhelming. It's not too big, it's not too small. I think it's a really good size. Plus you have the heads up display. A lot of cars are also doing away with the heads up display. Kind of blows my mind. I don't understand why you would like to do that. I like to be able to see how fast you're going right in front of you. This just, it seems like a very common thing in a car. So it does have two different screens. Overall, I gotta be honest, like these seats are incredibly comfortable. Zach and I, a few years ago, drove through the Pyrenees Mountains. Is it Pyrenees? Zach, is that what they're called? <laughs> I know. The Southern France. We, anyway, Zach and I went on a long drive with the G-Wagon, not an electric car, but it has a similar feel where it's like more of a boxy vehicle. I do like the way this windshield is. It kind of reminds me of like when you're filming a video or you're watching a movie and it's like cinematic display <laughs> because of the way that it's a little shorter but longer. <laughs> The 
there's so many Easter eggs on this. Like, for example, this right here is the surface of the moon, the sea of tranquility. The American flag is right here. This isn't an option that you can add or take off. All of these will have the American flag. And it's not just on this side. Check it out, American flag on both sides of your car. Never seen that in a car before, but hey, built in America, might as well be proud of it and show it on the outside of it. I love it. But did you know that this is also classified as a convertible? So yeah, this is a convertible SUV, so you know I'm gonna take the top off. This is how you do it. There's four different segments of this. You move those little latches right there, and then it just nice and easily comes out. actually store all of the panels inside of the front trunk. Convertible achieved. <laughs> Wait, it's not quite a convertible yet. We need to take this out. We don't need that. Let's take this out of here. Look at that, we got the beam out. There are some screws that we took off earlier to take this out. I was kind of wondering what these little spots were down here. Well, it turns out they're really well thought out. Underneath here, you have a space to put this in it. There we go, just pops right into place. And then you can put this down, store all of your things. And now you've got a pretty, a pretty real world convertible experience. The entire thing's a convertible. Like this is awesome. Riding around, just having the wind go through your hair or sorry, Zach, or <laughs> over your head. When I said earlier that it was 19 inches shorter than the truck, to be fair, there is a spare tire on the back, which I do like. I have never owned an electric vehicle that actually has a spare tire. If you get a flat, you have to call somebody to come service your electric car. But looking at the Hummer SUV, the window isn't the biggest. And so of course, technology, it's good to have cameras. There's a camera right here that can look out and see everything and kind of give you that 360 view when you're backing up and you can see like everything around you. But then also right here on the spare tire, they put a camera in here. There's so many cameras on this car. One of the really cool features is that it will show you how charged your vehicle is on the headlights. This is a sped up version of it right now, but this is going to be part of the car. Also another first of something that I've never seen before. The windshield is so wide and it's not super tall. And so you can't get your regular windshield wiper that covers a lot of ground. So what do you do? You just add another one. So this actually has three windshield wipers on it. But that's not the only automatic wiping system that's on here. And that sounded weird also, but. <laughs> <laughs> just like the old Humvee that is the original amphibious vehicle. In a lot of ways, these are meant to be off-road. There's not just cameras on the back of the car, but there's also cameras underneath the vehicle. So you can see your clearance live as you're driving going really slow over some boulders and you wanna see if it's gonna scratch the undercarriage of it. So they actually have a self-cleaning system where you can actually like have it spray and clean off the camera. The Hummer EV SUV is supposed to have around 300 miles range versus the Hummer EV truck has 350 miles range. But still 300 miles range is a good amount. Like our electric car that my wife drives around every single day gets 224 miles range and she has to charge it every day or every other day with taking the kids to school and everything. So. 300 miles range realistically is probably going to, in the real world, get you around like 250, 240, just with the way you drive, with all the different elements. That's just my experience with electric cars. That's a good amount for getting around town. The horsepower inside of the Hummer SUV is around 830 horsepower versus the pickup truck is going to have 1,000 horsepower. So it does have the same amount of torque, but it does have a little bit less horsepower. So honestly, it's gonna be hard to see the difference between those two to the average person that's driving, but it does have a little bit less horsepower. How do you charge the vehicle? Well, right here on the side, this is where you'll charge it right there. GMC is doing something really interesting with this. With this port, there is an option Get this, are you ready for this? There's an option to where you can take this and have a charger that you can plug into another electric car and charge it at six kilowatt speed, which is pretty insane. How nice would it have been if, I, if my car died on the road or we were camping or whatever and my car ran out and I just called a friend that had one of these or somebody there was there camping with us and they're like, hey, let me give you like 20 miles of range and you can go and get to the next charger so that you can charge. Electric car manufacturers, if you're listening, do this. I really like this feature. I think it's super cool. Welcome to the Ultium Battery Lab. 
It sounds like something that's out of a Marvel movie. Like I feel like we're gonna see Tony Stark walking by sometime. This is where they do the research and development for all of it. The training, the testing, it's a very rigorous process. This isn't some company that is just starting right now making electric cars. They've been making the Volt since 2012. Right now we're going to see how GM makes the battery packs. We have the battery technology from 2012 from the first generation Volt the second generation Bolt, and then in 2017, we've got the Bolt with a B, not with the V like the other two. And then we move on to the battery cells. The Hummer SUV is the latest and greatest right here. Can I touch that pouch? This is the battery that they're going to be using in the Hummer SUV. Inside of these modules, there will be 24 of these giant cell phone looking batteries. Then once everything is set and ready to go, they send it off to their manufacturing facility, which is in America, which is no surprise. When I say this is a research and development lab, I mean, they test stuff out. They're testing the batteries. They're pushing the batteries to the limits to make sure that they are tested to the most extreme environments possible before they put it in your car and you're driving on the street with it. So. This right here is this Sub-Zero container. <laughs> inside of this chamber is a battery pack that is actually going to be inside of the Hummer truck. They can take this thing down to 40 degrees Celsius and all the way up to 80 degrees Celsius. That's a pretty wide range, but they can also take the humidity down to two or three percent and then all the way up to like 98 percent, super high. So they can simulate almost any temperature in the world right here. This is the shaker room. This is my hearing protection. We're going to go inside and I want to explain to you what the shaker room is and why does GM have this one? This is the large one. They also have a mega shaker. We're going to go to the large one here. Come into the shaker room. This is it. Welcome to the shaker room. This is called the shaker. All right, turn on the shaker. So we did a low frequency sine wave, so you can actually see the shaker moving. The battery pack is on top of there. It doesn't look like it's moving that much, maybe to the naked eye, but that's moving a lot for a battery. It can shake the car this way or up and down, and they're recording everything, every data point to see if it's safe and to see if they need to shut it down at some point or just collecting data so that they know their cars are safe on the road. I've been driving an electric car since I bought a Nissan Leaf back in 2016. I've, since then, I've had five or six different Teslas. So I've been driving electric for a while, and one of the big arguments that I get from a lot of people that love gas cars and don't want to switch over to EVs is, what happens when the car is done with its useful life? It's gonna be so wasteful to have all of these battery cells that are just like discarded and thrown into a landfill. GM is doing something really cool about that. Behind me is basically like a giant power wall. GM has taken five first generation bolts that were from 2012 that were done with their useful life but there's still energy in the battery cell they put them inside of this giant power bank and essentially they have a power wall that they can run things off grid they've taken this thing to different places they took it to san francisco once and they ran the entire media relations tent solar was generating enough power to power this up it's essentially 90 kilowatt hours so like a tesla 90d basically inside of here. Over the next few years, we're going to start to see those cars that are just 2011, 12, 13s, that are old enough now that have 100,000 miles, 200,000 miles, and people are just not driving anymore, or they got in an accident. Very, very cool. I love that. Overall, I'm impressed. Um, this is supposed to be out in like early 2023, so the electric Hummer truck will be out first later this year early next year that'll be out and then about a year later you can get your hands on the suv and there's a lot of other easter eggs that they didn't tell me now that they said they're going to wait for customers to identify them as the car comes out really cool i like that so let me know your thoughts in the comments below what are your thoughts on the gmc electric hummer suv are you going to put a deposit down do you want to get one of these i think it's great So no, we don't have flying cars in 2021, but we do have cars that have self-cleaning cameras underneath the vehicle. That's a win, I guess. Might be a good video once this is out. Let's see if we can actually lift this thing up. Is it possible? I don't know, but it's got the tow hooks. Might as well use it. Zach is behind the camera <laughs> saying yes. Whoa. This is one of one. Should not drop things. I don't wanna drop this. This is the only one of these vehicles, I think. This is the battery cell that they're going to be using. Whoa. Can I touch that pouch? 